Nan, Jason Manford, Nick Grimshaw, Andrew Scott, Mouse Hold, his event building. It's been. The World Health Organization warned us that red meat in sausages and bacon are as bad for our health as plutonium, asbestos and cigarettes. Oh. If I'm honest, the biggest shock was the news that sausages contain meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no>. Plutonium. <laughs> plutonium? <laughs> so the summit when ISIS are going to have to up their game just to compete with a Greg's meal deal. I mean, <laughs> hey. They also say one in 50 hot dogs contain human DNA. Oh. Shocking. But what a twist at the end to an episode of Who Do You Think You Are? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, great granddad's a chipolata. What about that? <laughs> How's all this human DNA getting into pork? <laughs> Can't all be David Cameron's, can it? <laughs> After judges' houses, the X Factor judges chose their acts for the live shows. Did you see it? Yes! Didn't they drag it out choosing them? Yes! Oh, it's so difficult. I like them all. They're like me mum ordering pudding off a menu. Honestly. <laughs> there was no Sunita at Simon's judges' houses, was there? Oh. What a sad sight that must have been in home base. Returning a yucca... <laughs> Returning a yucca plant saying, I never wore it. Viewers complained there were too many adverts, weren't there? Yeah. Too, uh, too many. The most exciting decision of the night was deciding whether to put Mama Dolmio in the overs <laughs> because we're in a supergroup with Aunt Bessie. <laughs> Who do you think's going to win it? Aunt Bessie. Aunt Bessie. No, that's... That's a joke. That wasn't actually no. <laughs> You've fallen asleep during the adverts, love, haven't you? <laughs> Police arrested a 15-year-old boy over the Talk Talk computer hacking. And it's sad. And it's sad. What happened to the good old days when 15-year-olds only used the internet for sending Twitter death threats? <laughs> the boy is from Northern Ireland. It makes sense. You need skills in de-encrypting code there just to have a conversation. <laughs> Seriously, he could have everyone's bank security details. They shouldn't arrest him, they should shred him. <laughs> the boy was released after six hours. So you can certainly get out of custody faster than you can from a talk talk contract, can't you? <laughs> uh, I've said it, I've said it. And finally, with Halloween tomorrow, people were warned of a pumpkin shortage and advised to use turnips instead. Did you know about this? Why not? It's just swapping one vegetable for another. <laughs> what a lineup we have for you this Halloween weekend. <laughs> yes. He was terrifying as Moriarty and Sherlock, and now he's joined the Spooks Inspector. Yes, from the brilliant new Bond movie, the devilishly handsome Andrew Scott will be here. <laughs> yes. Bringing the X Factor to my sofa, I'll also be joined by the radio and DJ. We're all batty about when the very fly Nick Grimshaw gets caught in my web of chat. <laughs> they go looking for ghoulies with most haunted Yvette Fielding. Yes! <laughs> but first, he's a brilliant comedian who's all tree and no tree. <laughs> Give it up for the very funny Jason Manford! <laughs> Look at this! Yes! Welcome to Chatty Man. <sighs> what can I get you to drink? Uh, oh, Would you like a beer or something from the spirit world? I'll have a... Oh, is that a, a Yazoo? <laughs> yeah, a Yazoo. Do you want a Yazoo? Yeah, I'll have a Yazoo. Really? Oh, lovely, I'll have that. A milk drink. Lovely stuff. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Yeah. 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 You can't you can't keep respect when you're using a straw, can you? You can't chat anyone up if you're in a bar. You're like, you come here often. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Here, you've had a few supernatural experiences yourself, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, I don't really believe fully, but every so often something happens. That I think that's that's weird. Wait there, love. Wait there. Wait there. Wait there. Let's do this properly. All oh, right. Haunted house story gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> In the lights, wicked, wicked. Yeah, go on then, tell me. Oh my god, this is scary. So, about yeah. four years ago. Yeah. Why have you got the torch? Do you have to have the torch for listening? I didn't even think of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like when, it's like when someone's on the phone and they whisper and you whisper back. <laughs> So, yeah. four years ago, yeah. I was at the Adelphi Theatre in London's West End, <clears throat> and I was doing a show called Sweeney Todd. Oh, yeah. With Michael Ball and Imelda Staunton. Right. And I was in this little pokey dressing room on the third floor, and really small. And I, my daughters were sort of three or four yeah. and, uh, at the time. So I would, um, before the show started, the show started at half seven, so around sort of seven-ish, I would always... Uh, give them a ring or, uh, you know, a bit of FaceTime, Skype, and have a little chat. So one time, I've got the laptop there, and I've got my daughter's come, come up, and she's chatting away, and she's telling me what she's been doing all day, and, and I've told her what I've been doing. And then she said, Daddy. And I said, what? She said, who's that man stood behind you? <laughs> oh, my so, God. So, anyway, I've looked, because it's just on the off chance, and uh, no one there, Al. No one there. And so I left it. Then about... Two weeks later, I'm chatting again on, on the computer there, and she says, Daddy, she's laughing, she says, Daddy, what is that man doing behind you? And I said, right. <laughs> you know, you're packing in. <laughs> right, because Daddy's here by himself, right? Yeah. <laughs> I said, what does the man look like? She said, he's crying, and he's a soldier. That is weird. Now, let me, <laughs> let me tell you this. I'm not going to say, because I wonder if it was the paper clip coming up. <laughs> you tried to write a sentence? It might have been that. <laughs> no, you're a clown mask. No, seriously. No. Let me tell you, though, I, I, did a, I went and spoke to the company manager, and he said, this one's haunted by a guy called... I think it was called, a guy called William Terrell or William Tursell. Anyway, this guy was in a show... 1878, back in the day, and uh, he was about to show and he got stabbed at Stay's door by his understudy. No way. Stabbed by his understudy. It's documented. It's on Wikipedia. And he got... <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be true. It's got to be true. <laughs> stabbed by his understudy, dead, haunts the theatre. And I thought, that is so weird. So I Googled it, sort of have a little look at the details. He was in a play that night. It was the opening night of a play called The Secret Service where he was playing a corporal in the American military. No. That's weird. Anyway, she's in care now. Uh, <laughs> not having that in the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, saw, I saw a ghost on my school trip in Northampton at the Royal Theatre. This yeah? grey lady went by and absolutely <laughs> up. And I go, no, it did. She's wearing, like, old clothes like this. And I thought, you know, living in Northampton, you do see people dressed in the 50s and 60s. <laughs> That's Northampton, it's not a ghost. <laughs> Hot pants. Ah, oh, no, you're from Northampton. <laughs> now, we know you from doing stand-up and all your TV work, but what people might not know is you have a sideline in musicals. You love a musical. I do love a musical. Love a musical. It's just been announced you're going to be starring in the stage version of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang That's next right. year. Yeah. Oh, I know. Uh, Who are you going to be playing? Uh, I'm going to be playing Karatskas Potts, uh, Dick oh. Van Dyke. Oh, wow. I'm going to be Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. 
it, we've got to talk about your new show, Money Pits. Yes. Wagwan. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it started uh, last night on Dave. OK. And uh, it's a show... Um, yeah, that's the one. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of based on the internet sensation that is crowdfunding, which is lots of people... I've heard about this, yeah, yeah, this is kind of lots of people helping out one person or one idea or one invention or whatever yeah. and uh, throwing little bits of money. So we've got a pit of around sort of 40 or 50... Uh, people who are all self-made business people, yeah. and uh, they invest in people who come on the show. Yeah. And some people have got like a few hundred quid, yeah. and f some people have got fifty grand. Like you know, there's a there's a yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Nobody's like a multi-millionaire, uh, you know, investing millions of pounds in people. People come on with their ideas, and so it's got it's got elements of Dragons Den, and uh, but it's a, I think it's a bit it's got elements of Deal or No Deal and. Gogglebox oh, right. and all sorts. It's sort of just it's kind of real people investing yeah, yeah. in real people. So it's quite good fun. On Dragon's Den, you get loads of people coming in with weird ideas. What's the weirdest thing you've had in the money pit? Oh, we had the weirdest one was a guy who did um, he did like casts of Uranus, <laughs> not, the, not the planet now, like your actual. <laughs> <laughs> and then out of the cast, he would make uh, you a box of chocolates. Uh, in the oh, that's weird. weird. That is weird. Or jewellery, depending on oh, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted, like, oh, a look at my anus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he me. was, uh, yeah, he was quite, <laughs> he was quite a character. <laughs> but it sort of, you know, each episode's got, you know, someone like that, or and then some other ideas that you think, oh, no, actually, they're proper ideas. So it was, it's a proper show, like it's good fun. Do you come up with ideas yourself? You know, my other half, mm. he's always comes up with things. This is, he just comes. I've got a brainwave. This is his idea, yeah. Airbag full of makeup, yeah. <laughs> so if you ever have a crash, yeah. that comes out and at least you look good. <laughs> that would work. That's, that that would is work. genuine. Totally work. No, I, I don't come up with stuff like that. I, I, like, ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good luck with Bunny Pit. When's it on? It is on 7.30 on Thursdays on Dave and then on Dave Javu. All the time for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Bathurst, everyone. <laughs> First, though, he had beef with Benedict Cumberbatch and Sherlock. He's currently locking horns with Daniel Craig, Inspector, and tonight he's chatting with me. Yes, when it comes to the men he works with, he's definitely got a type. Give it up for the superb <laughs> Andrew Scott. say I'm drunk. You're <laughs> drunk. Oh, good. Well, listen, we'll talk about uh, Spectre in a minute, love. There you go, Angel. That. But first, we've got to talk about Sherlock. Okie doke. Right. Let's Cheers, everybody. There. Cheers, love. Cheers. Cheers. The show's massive all over the world, isn't it? Jesus. <laughs> It is, yeah. It's, yes. it's, it is, yes. Uh, it's, uh, it's so. I was say, in, you can in... call me Alan, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, my God. Yes. Oh, was you surprised how big it was? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you couldn't have fought for it. It's like the bloody carry on film here. Didn't you? I was surprised how huge it was. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the thing is about Sherlock, when they made it modern, yeah. I was thinking, mm, on paper, it shouldn't work. Mm. Do you know what I mean, because I'm like a traditionalist, you know what I mean? I still call Sith Jif. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he will always be that. What about a marathon and a Snickers? Uh, always marathon. Always marathon. Yeah. yeah. I still call I still call Iceland B Jam. <laughs> <laughs> Ireland, Siam, and Iraq, Mesopotamia. But that's not <laughs> right. Old school. Old school. But Sherlock, it's opened load of doors for the three mm. of you, really, isn't it? There's yeah, uh, Benedict uh, getting nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. There's Martin Freeman in the brilliant Fargo, mm. and here's you in Bond. Spectre. Yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> Do you know what? I don't think it could beat Skyfall, but I think it does. It was bloody brilliant. Yeah, it's a great movie, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's sort of bigger than Skyfall. It's um, Skyfall was quite intimate in a weird way for a Bond film, but this is sort of bigger, and there's a bigger cast, and there's all loads of locations, and it's. 
uh, loads of explosions. The sort of opening sequence costs more than, than any film that I've been yeah. in. And isn't it nice that it's moving with the times because there's like an older, not a Bond girl, a Bond lady. And, yeah. there. and I think there should be more MILFs. I do. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. I think sex I think sexier older women, because you know, like Dame Judi Dench, she mm. plays M, but mm. to me, she'll always be. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, they say, you know, that she, they keep talking about her being an older um, Bond girl, but actually, she's just the same age as the leading man. In the film, you play this guy at MI6 called Max, and it who's like a rival to M. Do you want to explain? How you fit into it without giving the whole game away? Yeah, he's, I played this guy called Max Denby, who's the sort of new head of the Double O program, and he's um, he's a cocky little so and so, and he's got yeah. he's got sort of very right, little <laughs> he is, he is and he's got um, he's got these very uh, ruthless kind of ideas about the way he wants um, the Double O program to go. That's where the drama comes from. So I've just sort of face off um, against Ray Fiennes, who plays Anne and, and Daniel. So yeah, there are rumours that this might be Daniel Craig's last <laughs> Bond. Yeah. I know, oh, I know. Oh, He's pretty yeah, big. Yeah. Who would you like to see slip into his speedos? <laughs> 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 um, I don't know if he's if he's finished up yet. I mean, he he's got a bit of a punishing schedule, so I'd imagine um, he needs a break between. Um, wait, wait. Have you got any any any? Well, I was thinking there's only one person who can actually do the job. Yeah, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we all sort of know. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with Spectre. It was absolutely brilliant. You're going to absolutely love it. You've got to go and see me. Get out of Andrew Scott, everybody. <laughs> so he's the best thing at breakfast since Pop Tarts and the only judge whose opinions I respect more than Rinder. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Style your quips in the air like you just don't care and give it up for the fabulous Nick Wimshaw! <laughs>
really incredible. It's always different, and we thought it's good to honour teenagers because I feel like they get a bit of bit of a tough time. They get a tough rep, don't they? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. True, yeah. What were you like as a teenager? Were you nerd? Um, Was you a jock like me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I did text my sister because we were doing a thing about it on, on Radio 1 this morning about what I was like as a teenager. So I was like, what was I like as a teenager? And she just wrote back, annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. You started getting into radio when you were a teenager at uni. Yeah. And have you seen this picture? Oh, God, not the... this bleeding picture. Yeah, but that was when I did student radio, and we interviewed Girls Aloud when they just won um, Pop Idol, The Rivals. I yeah. Think they and uh, they, they were doing, like, a tour, and we interviewed them for student radio. Oh. And I love when we get this out, when this picture gets mentioned, Cheryl's always like, oh, I look such a mess. And you're like, no. <laughs> I look like a mess. <laughs> 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 It's weird for me to see that because there aren't any embarrassing photos of me ever. Really? Me growing up. Seriously, no. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? really? There's not a That's single weird. one. I know, I know. <laughs> I just always take a good photo. <laughs> <laughs> just do. It's a curse. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we could make some now. Yeah? OK. Yeah, you could be my brother from another mother. OK. Yeah? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Look at this. We've got okay. this amazing thing. Let's do our first photo. Look at this. This last one. Oh! Yeah, that is special. Oh, yeah, nice. Do a moody face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is good. Yes. Yeah. Now, we've got to talk about the X Factor. Yes. Before you started, obviously, you know, with Radio 1, you're getting a lot of scrutiny in the press. Have you, have you been surprised how much scrutiny you're getting now with the X Factor? Um, I kind of knew it because I knew, like, Louis Walsh is so loved and, like, I loved him and love watching him on the show and I think that he has done it for 11 years. Yeah. And he's a staple of that show. I think, he pre I think he's the only judge, right, that's always been on it. Yeah. Because it's a big old change, yeah. Do you pay attention to what the papers say, though? No, not at all, because it's sort of, it's a... It's like a, you know, it's a constant turn in the papers, isn't it? Yeah. And I was like, you can't really live or die by it because it's not real. No. You can't really worry about that. You've kind of just got to get on with your life. And I think the minute that you start thinking, oh, someone hates me or someone on Twitter said that, then you'll oh, be a yeah, weirdo and you'll God. never leave your house. I know, and it, yeah. And then you'll be crazy. Yeah. So I think you've just got to ignore it. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Everyone gets yeah. Shit, doesn't Everyone they? Everyone gets, gets shit. My dad <laughs> hates with a passion shit. the Rolling Stones. Hates them. And I always think, well, if someone can really hate them, yeah. why can't millions of people hate me? Oh, <laughs> so that's absolutely beautiful. That is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good for you. <laughs> you. You put Shay, Sean Miley Moore yeah. and Mason Noyes yeah. through to the live shows. Can we talk about Sean? Oh, my God. <laughs> Where do we begin I, with I Sean? I wonder, what's in that bloody handbag of I, his? Well, the ball, is it like he needs to do some emergency bowling? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what is in it? Is it I like, you know. remember Raiders of the Lost Ark? <laughs> when you look inside, does your face melt? No! <laughs> <laughs> he keeps a pearl necklace in it, cos he says every man should have one. You're having a laugh. that's what he said. Mason gave him a pearl necklace, and he. 
<laughs> Mason's very sweet and they have a very lovely relationship. Yeah, that's good. And they get on. And I quite like that Sean and Mason are best friends. Because you don't won't put them two you together, would you? Would you? <laughs> and he would you at all? Like he's a proper lad and Sean is Sean and they're like and Mason like helps him down the stairs and like carries his bag, which I find <laughs> it is the funniest friendship in town. The live shows kick off this week. Yeah, tomorrow. Is it true you're not gonna be doing Halloween special? I know, I'm good about this. I'm sure we... I like that, the old things, don't you? Yeah. I love that, so we're not doing it. Because every year on X Factor, you have the Queen Week or the Big Band Week, don't mm -hmm. you, or the Movie Fiend Week. You're from Radio 1. Can't you freshen it up a bit? What, like Grime Week? Yeah, Crunk Week. Yeah. Dutty <laughs> Wine Week. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. Umpa Week. Hear me out. <laughs> um, every Umpa Week. Umpa. Every song... In the history of music, it sounds better when you've done it with an umpa band. Okay. <laughs> Do you lot know each other? Do you lot know each other? We've met. We've met, yeah, we've we met know each other. Times. They've been on we've the show totally and met. stuff, yeah, we've definitely. Met. Now, Nick, it was Judges' Houses on X Factor last weekend. Uh -huh. What's all this about Simon's house being haunted? Did I you don't know. know. Now, I can't tell if he's lying or not, but he is adamant that his house was haunted and that he saw a ghost. Now, years and years, we've got to talk about you. Uh-oh. Go on. Come on, what a year you've had. <laughs> King went to number one. Your album, Communion, went to number one. And you're on Chatty Man. You must be pinching your bloody self. <laughs> That's the highlight. What's been your highlight? You can't be Chatty Man. Stop pulling me <laughs> Come on. Pulling me definitely not. What? What's our highlight? <laughs> No, num getting a number one. Yeah. King yeah. getting number one was yeah. crazy. Glastonbury was a big deal. Glastonbury. Yeah. Because I, I saw you. I, 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 I thought you were Latt I thought Latt 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 and then I was at Reading. Oh, wow. Oh, Reading, oh. yeah. You were like in a cap and like raincoat and like you couldn't tell it was you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carried over. I'm, I'm a master of disguise. It's only when I use my voice and move that anyone knows it's me. But when I... <laughs> you look good. <laughs> Very sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Give it up for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for tonight's show. A massive thank you to Jason Manford, Andrew Scott of that building, and the ghost of X Factor Park. And of course, the brilliant Nick Grimshaw. Yeah.